Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. Today we have some winterizing to do here on the homestead because like it or not, winter is coming fast. And to be real honest, today feels like winter. <laughs> the day that you guys see this video will be the very first day of official winter. And that night it will be six degrees. Right now it's just a few days before then. It's not quite six degrees overnight, but it's getting pretty chilly. So we wanna make sure that our birds, our poultry have wind blocks and all of their hoop coops. And we also want to do some last minute winterizing in the greenhouse. So the first thing we're gonna to do today is winterize the two hoop coops that we've had for you know several years now. Uh, you know, chickens are pretty, cold hardy animals as long as you protect them from the wind so that's our goal today is to put up wind blocks on the hoop coops this is something we've been doing now for the last several winters the chickens seem to be very happy after we do it in fact on these cold windy days they end up spending a good part of their day just inside the coop now we have one hoop coop that is new this year and that is a hoop coop for the silkies uh, so we're going to have to do something a little bit different this year we don't have wood for them like in these so we're gonna have to look around the homestead see what we can find in the past i would have just gone out and bought sheets of plywood to make the front and the back for theirs but with the price of plywood these days we're gonna see if we can do it instead with something we already have but let's start with these two hoop coops here the one for the american breast chickens and the one for our ducks now today is a prime example of why we're doing this we're getting about 35 to 40 mile an hour wind gusts today and just the normal wind, kind of sustained wind, is about 20 miles an hour. So uh, it's, it's a little chilly out today. I think the actual temperature is right around freezing, and with the wind chill, it's in the low 20s. So uh, we're going to get this done as fast as we can because we want to get back inside where it's warm. So like I said, all we're going to do is put up pieces of plywood on the front and the back of the hoop coop. We made these several years ago. Each one is kind of custom to each hoop coop because no two hoop coops turn out the same but they're holding up well. We take them down in the summer so they get airflow in the summer, but put them back up every winter. And again, it doesn't make it completely airtight inside. In fact, we don't even put a piece here because we do still want them to have some ventilation. This is, again is just to help block the wind from really hitting on the chickens. Well, that side was easy enough. Rather than going around to do the back of this hoop coop, we're just gonna move over and do the duck, the front side of the duck hoop coop and then we'll go to the other side and do both of the backs at the same time. You can see, you know, this wind and cold really doesn't affect the chickens and ducks very much. You can see the chickens over there hanging out. They like to scratch around and they like to be in the sun. You'll notice that we have given them access to this area out here. This is where we have our orchard and our garden. Uh, someday we'll have grapes and berries. Generally, they're just isolated to the chicken moat, which goes all the way around this area. But this time of year, we really like to let them out to scratch around in the garden, uh, eat up anything that's, uh, that we don't need out there, uh, eat any bugs and things like that. And they just really do enjoy that freedom over the winter. So let's just head over, uh, take care of the ducks. All right, that's gonna be a big help for them from this side. Let's go around and do the other side of the hoop coops. So there's not much different on the back side except we just have one solid piece because we don't have a door here. So basically we're just gonna hold up this piece of plywood that we've cut out and screw it to the hoop coop. Down, make it easier for us. Okay. 
All right, these two are ready for winter. Time to start to try to figure out what we can do for the one for the silkies. So this is the other hoop coop that we have to put a front and back on. We've looked all over the homestead. Uh, like I told you guys earlier, we didn't really want to go out and spend any money to do this because with the price of lumber and everything else, we just need to do this on a budget. So um, what we've decided is that we found two scrap old pieces of plywood that will work for the front section here. Uh, they actually used to be sides on my trailer. They're in pretty rough shape, but they'll at least they'll get work. us through this winter. Yeah, they'll work. And then on the back side of the hoop coop, we've decided we're actually going to use some old corrugated metal roofing. So we'll be able to cut that to the shape of the hoop coop and screw that to the back. It'll work perfectly and it'll be a nice place for the silkies to retreat to when it's cold, right. overnight, when it's windy, and it'll work just fine for Yeah, them. I've actually checked rechecked the weather for the rest of the week here coming up and it is going to get cold. We've got uh, one day where the highs are in the single digits. Yeah. Now, for some of you who live in places like Wisconsin or Canada, Canada. or Minnesota, yeah. Minnesota Michigan. That, that might not be a big deal at all, but here in the Ozarks. That's pretty chilly. Th that is, that's I mean, that's chilly. about as cold as we mm -hmm. ever get. Yeah. So uh, we need to make sure everybody is safe and we need to get this done now so that we don't have to be out in that weather any more <laughs> yes. than we absolutely have absolutely. to. All right, so we're gonna get started. We're gonna work on the back side first uh, with the metal. I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna do that, how we're gonna cut it out to the shape and everything. We're gonna get that put on first. As we're working here, you will notice that we have uh, this fenced off with electric. The hoop coop is behind us and that is really to give the silkies a place to kind of retreat away from the calves that we have in here that we're weaning uh, before we take them to the livestock auction. This electric fencing stretches up around the front of the hoop coop and that's where we feed them and have their little uh, pan of water to it protects their feed from being eaten by the cows. Um, and like I said, it also gives them a place to retreat to if the cows are getting spunky, chasing after them, uh, they can get away right here. Overall, uh, the calves and really all of the cows are interested in the chickens, but lose interest quickly. Um, and then they just kind of all get along nicely. So now just a quick update on the calves that we have over here. Uh, as a review, we have three calves. They're, they're about uh, six and, and seven months old. They're doing really well here since we have separated them from their moms. We separated them, like I said, to wean them and to make sure they're in really good health and condition before we sell them. We have three of them. All three of them are Hereford Limousine Cross and they're all bull calves. Uh, they're doing really great, eating on their own, still calling for mom once in a while, but their moms are, their moms are over it. They're, they're down exploring, eating hay and, and all over the place, but they're doing really well. Back to work on this project so we can get inside and have another hot cup of coffee. All right, so this is the type of metal that we're going to be using. Like I said, we have some old pieces of this from a building that we tore down. We took the metal off so we could save it for exactly things like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the bottom and we're just gonna kind of work our way up. We'll measure, we'll cut a piece, we'll put it on. Then we'll hold up the next piece. We'll kind of trace this design onto the metal and then we'll cut the metal out in that shape. We'll put that piece on and then we'll move up. I think it's gonna take three pieces. We might end up being like a, just an inch or so short at the top, uh, but that's okay. It's still gonna give the, the silkies a nice windbreak back here. So this first piece, I don't think, I think it'll just be one straight cut. So we're gonna get measuring and then uh, we'll get that cut out. All right, so we need to be on the inside of these boards here. Looks like 80, 81 and a half inches. I think I'm gonna just do 81 to be okay. safe. All right, so we've got this first piece measured and marked. For cutting this corrugated metal, uh, several years ago, I bought this uh, attachment for my drill. It's basically a tin snip that connects to your drill. It's made by a company called Malco. And you guys, this thing is awesome. It saves you so much time when you have a lot of this metal to be cutting. So basically just go on your line. Let's 
put this up there. I'm just going to be using some self-drilling screws to put this to put this up. Now to get our design on here, I'm just going to use a Sharpie and this is not going to be an exact science, but we're going to just basically trace the design of the, of the hoop coop on there and then we'll be able to go cut that out with our tin snips. All right, let's hold this piece up there and see how it turned out. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, final piece of the metal here. And look at, hey, we are gonna make it all the way to the top. Oh, even over actually. Yeah. Do you want to come down a little bit? So yeah, let's come to... down a little bit so we're so we're gonna have to cut the top. Yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Why don't you get some screws and temporarily that. get that in there? Yeah. Good. Good one. I'm telling you guys, this is making me regret all those times I complained about the heat. All right. Okay, let's trace let's it. Let's trace that, get it cut out. That'll be great. That is going to be a nice solid windbreak for those chickens. And actually, you guys, I like this better than the plywood that we used on the other two. I think when those eventually wear out, um, probably go to metal on everything because it's going to last pretty much forever. And over winter, we can just take it into the workshop and store it easily, either up in the rafters or whatever. It's going to take up a lot less room than storing these big pieces of plywood. All right, let's move on to the front and get that done. And then we've got one more project to do today, which is in the greenhouse. Now, like I said, for the front, we are going to use plywood only because I already had these scrap pieces. They're pretty old and worn out, but they should get us through this winter, maybe even a couple winters, who knows? All right, so we're basically on these, we're gonna run them upright. These, are, these pieces are two feet wide and somewhere between six and eight feet tall. So. They should be tall enough to do these sides. And then we're going to, uh, we're basically going to do the same thing. We're going to hold it up there, trace it on, and then we'll run it up to the workshop so I can cut it out with a jigsaw. I don't have a cordless jigsaw, so we'll need to do that up at the workshop.
that hoop coop is as good as it's going to get for this winter. I think this is going to be awesome. It's going to give them a lot more protection from the wind. Again, our temperatures here aren't so cold that they necessarily need to be protected from the actual temperature. As long as they're out of the wind and they're dry, that's what really matters. And this is going to do the trick for that. Okay, the final project for the day is for us to do a little bit of winterizing in the greenhouse. We do have things planted in there, which we'll show you and give you an update on, uh, but we need to prepare them for the really cold nights coming up as well. Well, it sure is nice to be in the greenhouse out of the wind. Uh, it's not much warmer in here right now because it's cloudy. I um, mean, this is an unheated greenhouse, but it really does make a difference to be out of the wind. Now, just to review, we've had this greenhouse on this property since July of 2021. So this is our second winter growing in this greenhouse. Now this is actually the third greenhouse that we have from Grower Solution. We've been very pleased with these greenhouses, very pleased with the kits. Uh, they go up easily and they really are affordable. Just to remind you, just remind you guys, we have an ongoing 10% off uh, discount code through Grower, Grower Solution. If you wanna learn more about these greenhouses, if this is something that you'd like to do at your place, make sure that you check out the link that we have in the description section of this video. Our goal for today is to put up the row cover. Now a row cover is basically a piece of fabric that you um, extend over your plants. It's an additional uh, protection from the, the winter temperatures. That's what we're gonna be installing today. Now we have plants on both sides of the greenhouse right now. Our hope is to get those that we want to protect for the winter all on one side. So we have some moving around to do. Then we'll put in the wires that create the hoop along the entire row and then we'll install the row cover. Um, and so that's what we're doing today. Now, I wanna show you guys something pretty special. Uh, Kevin was working in here a few days ago. He was uh, kind of cutting out the old plants and getting rid of them. Um, and he was working over here on these two buckets. Now these buckets had celery plants in them and he was just gonna chop off the old foliage and just kind of get rid of them. But what he discovered once he did that, I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. He discovered that there are ladybugs hibernating and overwintering in here and all in the foliage. They've really just kind of taken up a home in here, hopefully to uh, survive the winter and continue breeding uh, over the spring and over the summer. Last year we had so many ladybugs all over the homestead property. It was really wonderful. Ladybugs are so great to have around because they eat so many bugs. They especially like to eat aphids. So we have decided to keep all of this foliage just down here on these buckets so that they can continue hibernating over the winter and they can be kind of a safe haven. Now we are gonna include these in our row of protected plants with the row cover. Maybe they wouldn't need it, I don't know, but just to help them survive the winter, we're gonna do that. So that is what we're going to get started doing. Uh, it's really not a difficult project. Shouldn't really take that much time at all. It's just important for us to get done now before the big cold front comes.
Well, all of the plants are moved to where we want them for the winter. We're gonna review real quickly with you guys what we're growing in here, and then we're gonna get busy covering them up. Okay, what we have growing in here this winter, we have four different types of leaf lettuce. They are doing so well, and we have started harvesting them. This is the time of year where Kevin and I have a salad every day for lunch. So this has been working out really well for us. Next up, we have four buckets of different types of bok choy, four buckets of different types of radishes. Then we have four buckets of carrots in here. These really are ready to pick and we're picking them as we need them. Two buckets of some green onions. There are just a few of them in each bucket. These are two buckets of leeks. Now they're done growing and we're really just keeping them here so that we can harvest them as we need them. It's been really nice to be able to come out here and cut some lettuce and then pick one leek to go to chop up to put in our lettuce. They're so mildly flavored um, and they really, we've really just been enjoying using them this way. We have a bucket of chives, three buckets of anise hyssop, which is Kevin's favorite kind of tea. He wanted to make sure that they really did survive well over the winter. And then really last, we just uh, back here, moved those two celery plants, those buckets uh, that have the uh, ladybugs overwintering. So that's what we're gonna be completely covering uh, over the winter. All right, we're gonna get started putting our hoops in our pots. Now, what we use are these pieces of wire that look like this. They have some spring to them. We bought these, oh gosh, probably four or five years ago from Grower Solutions. I'm not sure if they still sell these or not, uh, but if they don't, uh, if you guys wanna make your own, what you can use to make these are tension wire from chain link fencing. And they sell that really at just about any home improvement store, like Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those. If you go to the chain link fencing section, it'll come on a roll and then you can just cut it. Uh, what we use, these are six feet in length and that's perfect for what we do. Basically, all we're gonna do is put one end into one pot, the other end into a pot like this, and that's all we're gonna do. We're gonna do this in every pot down the row and then we'll be able to put our roll cover over the top. So this is the material that we use as row covers. It's a real thin material. Uh, you can buy it in different thicknesses. So this is what we used all last winter as well and it did a really good job. Now, of course, we are again growing plants that are pretty cold hardy to begin with. Right. We're not growing anything that's real frost sensitive. So for us, this is just kind of an extra barrier. Uh, if you're in a much colder area or you're growing plants that aren't as frost tolerant, then you need to have a heavier thing or you need to heat your greenhouse. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna get this stretched out and we'll put it over the plants. Well, that's how you do that. And then we just secure uh, just a few of them to the wire with some clothespins. That is a good job done between getting all of the hoop coops secured, getting the greenhouse all set for this cold weather. You know, sometimes on a homestead or a farm, you forget that as the homesteader or the farmer, you're the keeper. You're the keeper of everything that happens or everything that's being raised on that homestead. So whatever it is, whether it's plants, animals, everything around the homestead, it's your responsibility to keep all of it safe in hot weather, cold weather, 
storms, whatever is coming your way, it's your responsibility, and that's what we've taken care of today. And now we can rest comfortably. We're not going to worry in the middle of the night when storms come in or uh, when it gets super cold about how things are going out here in the greenhouse or with the animals. They're all set. So you guys, thanks for spending the day with us while we got these projects done around the homestead. Hopefully you can take some of these things and use them on your own place as well. Hey, if you're enjoying our videos, uh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button before you leave. If you know other people who would enjoy our videos, remember that the absolute best way you can help us is just by sharing our videos on all of your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.